Hello everyone, and welcome to part 6 of how to make a point and click game in Unity. So last time, we designed these sprites in order to create a better looking scene, and we planned out how the game is going to function. Specifically, we'll have blocks jumping out of different layers of the scene, and the player must shoot them by aiming with the crosshair. So now, I would like to make it so the game knows when you should be able to hit a block and when you shouldn't be able to. What I mean is, if you have a block that comes out of the grass layer, you should be able to hit it as long as it's not behind the grass. If you have a block that's in this mountain layer and it goes behind the tree, you shouldn't be able to hit it when it's behind the tree. The first thing I need to do is go get my crosshair. Now if I were to go back into my game scene where I created my crosshair, and if I were to click this up on the hierarchy and drag it into the assets folder, it creates this prefab that I can use at any time in any scene. So if I were to go back to my level design and place the crosshair and click play. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. I forgot to attach the um, crosshair script. So now, crosshair should move around with my cursor at all points, and you should be able to see it at all times. Next little bit of polish I would like to do is make it so you can't see the crosshair or the uh, mouse cursor when you're using the crosshair. The way I'm going to hide the cursor is by going to my crosshair script and adding the line screen dot cur oh wait, cursor dot visible equals false. And now if I were to go back to Unity, click play, cursor cannot be seen. And this just helps gives you a bit more immersion. Like now it really feels like I'm aiming with some sort of weapon. So now on to making so the game knows when a block can be clicked and can't. I'm gonna get this block and what I want to do is give it a box collider. I'm gonna name this dummy because I just want to test that the game knows when it can be hit and when it can't be hit. Now all I want to do just make sure that it gets hit, that it will send me a signal by printing on the console that it knows that this has hit and when it's behind the grass that it hasn't been hit when I click on it. So I'm going to hide this down below the grass. And if you're wondering how I managed to do that, I made it so the Z, each of these major objects have different positions on the Z axis. This one's negative 5, so it's closest. Tree is at 0, so it's more in the middle. These mountains are at 5, so it's further back. Clouds are at 7, so it's even further than that. And the sky is at 10, so it's at the furthest. What I'm going to do is put this at z equals 4. That way it's just by the grass. So on this dummy, I am going to give it a new script and just name it test underscore click. Because all I'm doing is testing that it can be clicked and that it can't be clicked. Um, did not open. Now I'll open it. And I'm just going to use this same void on mouse over that we use for our block movement script. And just paste it on here. So here's the thing. Right now, I should be able to click it, but once it moves behind this grass, I don't want to click it anymore. Unfortunately, Unity doesn't really know when it's behind the grass or not. It All it does is sees that your mouse is over the box collider and figures that it can be moused over and it can be clicked. However, if I were to go to my grass game object, 
and add a box collider and just hide this below the grass. I won't be able to shoot it when it's behind the grass. And that's all we really need to do. We just need to add colliders. So on this cloud, I'm going to add a polygon collider on these mountains, also a polygon collider. And the reason I'm using polygon colliders instead of box colliders is because I want a bit more accuracy than what I would normally get and oh. Okay, just a quick thing to keep in mind. If you add components while in play mode, they will not remain added when you leave play mode. So, oh well. So I'll just go through all of these objects, adding colliders in order to make it so the uh, block is only hit at the appropriate times. This one I'll go with the box collider. All right. So now I'm just going to go around testing that our dummy is only hit at the appropriate times. All right, and it seems like using colliders were just the thing we needed to do. And this is just another th example of Unity doing most of the complicated coding work for you, which puts a lot of the uh, stress of doing more complicated and time-consuming tasks off the developer so they can focus their time on polishing and implementing other ideas. So now making our game is really just a matter of thinking, how do we want our level to progress? So I'll just hop into the game view and just show what I want to have happen. As I said before, I want blocks to jump from different parts of the scene at different levels in the background. And as time goes on, I want there to be more and more stuff going on in order to provide a bit more of a challenge for the player. Oh, I want it to work like those mini games in Ocarina of Time where the rubies would jump out or slide along this um, clothesline, I guess it was, and you just had to shoot them as they came along. Only just make it with the blocks but with more interesting movement. Like, let me get at the dummy block. As an example, we got this purple block down here. I might want it to jump up and just jump down. Of course, the scale would have to be a bit bigger because this is supposed to be one of the big blocks that comes out from the front. So jump up, jump down. I'll even have it be from behind the tree and maybe it'll jump into the grass or something. I'll also do really small ones that are way out there and I'll make them fall from the cloud maybe even have them spin around at interesting angles so just have them rain from the cloud into the mountain or even have ones being launched from one side of the mountains to the other and then when the player clicks the game object I want it to be destroyed the last thing I'm going to do for this video is just make it so you can click a block and destroy it so the way I'm going to get this to be destroyed when it's clicked is by having the line destroy game object. And that will make the object disappear from existence. And as you see, I have these two objects. And if I click one, it gets destroyed. I click the other, it also gets destroyed. And they also disappear from hierarchy. So that sums it up for this episode. We did get a bit done by making it so the game knows when these blocks can be clicked. We added a bit of polish by making it so the mouse cursor is hidden when in the game. And we got to get these objects to be destroyed when they're clicked. In the next episode, we'll focus on scripting out how the game is going to play out. You know, creating what will happen and when. Like, when are blocks going to jump out of the grass? When are they going to fall from the cloud? And that kind of stuff. So thank you for watching. If you have any comments or suggestions, please let me know in the comments. And I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.